Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at the CM4 compute module from Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Before we begin, I do want to thank Raspberry Pi Foundation for sending me over the Raspberry Pi CM4 board as well as the IO board for testing. I gotta say, I did have this board for about a week already and I've been pretty busy with the Pi 400 launch and a couple of other videos that I was working on already so I didn't get a chance to really play around with this yet. But I did manage to actually put in a graphic card into this guy and get it past the point where it was actually going to initialize but the drivers were having issues. So I did get really far with the graphic card if you guys are interested in seeing that video later anyway let's check this board out and see what it's all about now first we have the cm4 module which is the brains guts everything everything that gets powered is through this little board itself now it is much smaller than the raspberry pi 4 but keep in mind this can't operate on its own unless it's plugged into something like IO board. So ultimately this will make it a lot bigger than the Raspberry Pi 4. But the idea behind the CM4 is to put it into embedded devices like TVs or digital signage or even robotics or anything like that. This way you don't have to carry such a big board like the Raspberry Pi and this could be hidden away anywhere. The breakout board is just really for us makers so we could actually utilize it and see what we could do with it. One of the biggest changes that they made on the Raspberry Pi 4 on this model is they did away with the USB 3.0. Instead, they gave us the PCIe, which to be honest, I, I don't know what I feel about that yet. I do like the fact that I could now stick in a lot of devices and play around with it. But the Raspberry Pi 4 is definitely more of a user-friendly device where I could utilize the USB 3 much more. So to begin, you do stick this board onto the uh, breakout and you can see underneath this board there's like two connectors on the bottom that will stick to the board and it does have a very snug fit when you snap it in pulling it out is actually a little bit harder than i thought because it doesn't come out smoothly in one piece you would have to like come at an angle and play around with it and i i'm really afraid of damaging the board now to talk about the io board this is an interesting piece of hardware now to start off we are using a barrel connector a 5.5 millimeter barrel connector that takes 12 volts all the way up to 26 volts now if you are going to be using the pcie you will be using the 12 volts anything other than 12 volts the pcie will be deactivated or you might just damage it now moving on you do have your sd card and there is an option if you want to boot from sd card or the emmc right next to that you would see a micro usb connector and this is to be used to connect to your computer so you could actually transfer image and connect to this thing and update the eprom and stuff like that which i'll talk about more in a second then you have your 10 pin usb hub in the back so you could actually stick another two Two USB connectors onto this guy including the two that it comes with with the board so you could have a total of four USB 2's now this is a USB hub and when you first install the operating system on here it will not be activated so you do have to go into config and add a line just to activate that will which I will show you in a second as well next to that we have the one gigabit Ethernet adapter and then two full-size HDMI's, which I like that they kept instead of the micros. And then wrapping around, you have your battery for your real-time clock. Now, I don't have anything in here, but it's a standard uh, CR2032. I believe that's the model number, but those are the standard batteries you'll find in computers. Then you have your 40-pin GPIO and your power of Ethernet. Now, this 40-pin GPIO is pretty cool because it's laid out to a point where you could actually use the boards that you would normally use on the Raspberry Pi 3 or 4s or anything, the hats that you can stick on top. It'll fit perfectly in here, and it has the screw holes for it as well. Now, moving over next to that, you have your camera 0, camera 1, and two displays. So you can stick in your 7-inch Raspberry Pi displays. Then you have this little breakout again, this I.O. connector. Now, here is where you need to address yourself for uh, flashing EMMC. So these jumpers you would have to set. Now, I do have this jumper off to the side right over here because nothing should be connected if you are running the Raspberry Pi, but if you are planning to flash the EMMC, this would have to move over to this spot. Moving on, you have uh, external PSU, which means if you are connecting something that requires external power, to your PCIe device, this is where you would pull it from. The PCIe adapter itself on um, all computers are only 30 watts. So if you're doing anything that's more than 30 watts, you will need that external power connector. And most, say, graphic cards have a six pin connector in the back or even devices like expandable SATA cards, they sometimes might even have a plug that you could plug in the back just because it requires more power. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing a graphic card on this without using one of these PCIe extensions with its own self power because you could blow out a 30 watt connector over here. I've done it before when back in the mining days. Now next to that you do have a fan connector which I don't know how to operate this at all and I couldn't find much paperwork on it. I do have to look it up 
supposedly if there's a fan connected that means i have a way to control it but i don't know where in the raspberry pi that i have that option to control a fan now also fitting a pcie card on this guy fits very well the front shield will actually line up with here you don't have to take apart the front panel like the other guys that i've seen done you would have to remove this piece it fits perfectly well you can also use one of these pcie to 16 pcies to stick something like a full graphic card on here or something that requires more slots Generally, any device that has the PCIe 1X should work. You just won't get the full speed benefits of the X4, X8, or X16. So you're only capped at five gigabits per second. And that's basically about it on the board. I find it to be very interesting. I could do a lot with it, uh, again, especially with the PCIe adapter. Now, if this is your first time playing around this guy, this is one of those boards that you actually need instructions for. I'm not even kidding. I couldn't get it to work in the beginning because it's not something you jump right into. You do need to know where to put the GPIO pins. You do also need to know that you have to activate the USB hub. Those are the things that I don't commonly do on a regular Raspberry Pi 4, but on this guy, you do. So first, when you pop in, you have to install this program called RPI Boot. It runs as a DOS program, and once you turn it on, then you are allowed to plug the board to the computer. I will first set the jumper to make sure that EMMC boot is disabled. Then I will stick in the micro USB and then the barrel connector. Once you're done with that, the Raspberry Pi boot will detect it and turn it into a storage device. So you'll be able to read the EMMC. There, you can actually flash an image. Now, the only way to flash an image is to use Win32 Imager right now. You can't use the Raspberry Pi Imager. I tried, it just doesn't work. You need to use the Win32 Disk Imager and you can flash your image into the AEMMC boot. Once you're done with that, you're still not finished really because you have to activate the USB 2.0 hub. So in there, you have to go into the configs and add this one line, which is the DT overlay line, and you have to enable the host. Once you're done with that, then you can officially boot this board and have the USB working and everything else. But also remember, when you're about to boot, you have to flip the jumpers off again. Take it off the EMMC disa uh, boot disable, and then you're ready to go. All right, so popping into a desktop, it's a standard basic Raspberry Pi 4 desktop that you would normally see. Nothing's really changed over here, but what I did do is a speed test on the EMMC. So over here, we have the read test, which is about 44 megabytes per second and the write test is about 37 megabytes per second, which is definitely faster than the SD card, but it's not all that crazy. I mean, if I stuck in the SSD on the Raspberry Pi 4 with the USB 3, I definitely get a lot better read and writes with that instead. But it is EMMC and it is inside this little module. So, but ultimately um, that is it as far as the desktop goes. Also, another cool thing about this is now we could use LSPCI. And as you can see right now, I actually just have my little PCI bridge and SD controller plugged into it right now. So you could actually pull up whatever device you need to see by using LSPCI, which we could never do before because we didn't have a PCIe adapter. Again, let me know what you want me to test on this. I am gonna do more of an in-depth review of the operating system, kernel compiling, and all the other stuff because this board could do a lot, especially now we have the PCIe adapter. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.